stereotypical look back at either singular or series of the book. Series? Me fail English? That's impossible. Hey everyone, Genome here, coming to the next episode in my book recommendation and or review series. It's a series where I take a look back at, you know, either singular books or books that are part of the series and recommend either the single book or the entire series. Well, that was a long-winded way of saying I'm going to recommend books. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. Um, first off, this actually is a, this, this video is a double reason I was going to shoot something else tonight, but I had a new piece of equipment tonight. You can't see it, but right now it's off. Uh, all out of frame, and that is my new and improved shotgun mic. So I'm going to be playing with some settings. It's probably not going to be perfect yet. I'm going to try to optimize it, but hopefully I have a lot better recorded sound uh, from a distance. I don't have to worry about lab mics too much and getting all that sorted out. So none of you care about any of that because you want to talk about the book. So all right, let's talk about the book. So let's go back to 1999 and take a look at a novel that... While it got a lot of traction, I don't think it's talked about nearly enough. Uh, actually, I do believe this uh, book had a very loosely adapted movie uh, attached to it. And I am talking about another 1999's The Descent by Jeff Long. I heartily endorse this event or product. Uh, hopefully this thing will actually... There we go, get my hand out of the way. It'll actually focus, but... This is a novel in the vein of... If I won't say this, but... You know, like maybe the Jules Verne center of the earth thing. And guess what? <laughs> there wasn't a whole lot of books since Verne about that kind of thing. So I stumbled across this book by accident, and man, is it a monster of a read. So let's just get into some real, real brief plot points. I'm not going to give the book away for you at all. And just, just tell you why I recommend it so highly. Um, this book deals with, as I said before, the center of the earth, and we come to find out that not only is, you know, the underground catacombs beneath the plant's crust inhabitable, there's actually another race that's been living down there since the dawn of time, the Hadals, right? Um, Homo Hydalis, I believe, is they referred to, which is actually uh, kind of funny for those uh, <laughs> uh, biology files out there. But, so what are those denizens down there like? Well, <laughs> let's just say they run the gamut uh, between mythology and practicality. What the hell kind of an analogy is that? That uh, is, is really almost unparalleled in a lot of books that I've read. So it's not an exceptionally long book or anything like that, but you know, it, it's a good couple day read if you don't uh, sit there and devour it eight hours a time like I do. So real briefly, this book kind of centers on four characters. Um, the main protagonist, if you will, sort of, is Ike. He's a former captive of said Hadels that are below the surface. Uh, and has recently been reintroduced to society. Uh, captivity is extremely brutal. The, the Hadal society is, is torturous. It's, it's, you know, they're always hungry and starving. It's not easy to live down there, right? It's very base. Um, and Ike was a prisoner there for like eight years. And so he comes back a scarred man, both physically and emotionally. But he was strong. He adapted to life down there. And he became basically a ringleader of the other uh, slaves that were down there. Basically what happens is uh, they will pull people from the surface down with them and turn them into chattel, basically, or breeding stock, as we see also in this book. So, yeah, Ike is a protagonist of a lot of this, but this, this book bounces around uh, quite a bit, actually, between who's telling the story. Uh, the next protagonist, uh, as it were, is uh, Ali, or Ali, I'm going to guess it's pronounced Ali, it's A-L-I. Uh, she's a female um, Jesuit, basically she's a Catholic not quite none. She was in the convent, but uh, she left. It's been a little while since I read it, so I'm a little fuzzy on the details, but not like I need to give them all to you. Anyway, but basically, she's an expert in dead languages, old languages, and there is a expedition that's going to be charting the what's underneath, like the Pacific Ocean. I think it's the Pacific in this case. And they're actually going to go all the way underneath the Pacific Ocean and come out the other side somewhere in, in Japan or Russia or something like that. But basically, <laughs> they're, they're going to go under an entire ocean, right? Uh, mapping and, and going as, or logging as they go. They're getting a whole team of scientists and soldiers going down there, right? Because this is like, no one's ever pushed this far down there. Because man has filled that void, like, on the periphery of the entrances to the underground labyrinths, right? Man has started to encroach. They're bringing little mini cities down there. It's like a free-for-all. It's like a wild west down there because no one owns that ground, that property, right, yet. 
So, she is basically the other main protagonist in this book. Uh, we also have Thomas, the scholar with the mysterious past, and uh, he is part of a secret society of intellectuals and Jesuits as well, for the most part. Uh, tasked with tracking down none other than, wait for it, Satan himself. So, uh, yes, this book even deals with biblical themes quite a bit and how some of those things may have been foisted upon, you know, humanity at large. We don't really find out too much, but that's the best kind of way to find out about things, right? So let's imagination fill in the rest. And uh, the last basically major player in this book is a major branch. Uh, he is a soldier who is disfigured horribly in an accident, um, in a war zone, basically one of those forgotten ones like Kosovo and Bosnia and all that good stuff, you know? Um, and he winds up being embroiled in a special ops team that goes underneath the ground from time to time, and he becomes enamored with the place too. But there's a lot of entry going on, and he does have a very important role to play in this book too. So. The gist of this entire book is the expedition itself. Uh, you know, I think it's several dozen people trying to make their way completely into uh, an unknown territory, surrounded by enemies. They don't know that when they go down there. And, you know, most of it is the name of science for the scientists and for the mercenary soldiers that are hired to protect them. It's just a big payday for them. And for the corporation that's sending them, that just means untapped wealth that they can lay claim to once they discover it, you know, below the ocean, right? So, we come to find out that the underground labyrinth and all that, they are not, like, uninhabited, they're not sterile, they, like, have whole ecosystems going on down there, completely, like, away from the sun, which is, you know, we're told that it doesn't really happen too often, you know. At the bottom of the ocean, there's still, you still have some of the, like, the, the solar table up there, you know, stuff that drifts down, but it's, it's minimal down there. Well, here, they have nothing, right? So, we kind of find out there's entire lakes down here, they have weather patterns down there, it's not like boiling magma all the time, there's, you know, there's areas that are frozen, it's just, it runs, like, the entire, like, topological and geographical spectrum down there that it does on the surface, there's just no sunlight, right? So the denizens down there have to adapt to being in turtle darkness, but there's, there's light and there's ways uh, that they work around this, right? But in any case, it's just a fascinating, fascinating tale, and it's it's kind of a, I don't know, it's it's a tale of survival, because, you know, things don't go well. When you're down there surrounded by enemies, and these enemies tend to eat their victims, they they have no problem eating people, right? They're, they're cannibals, There's, food is very scarce down there in the uh, below, below regions, I guess you could call it, but... So, it's, it's a tale of survival, and, and of people, like, breaking out under pressure. Uh, you get to know several characters fairly well, you know, tertiary characters on the side. There's a kind of despotic colonel who's running a whole military operation to get people through. Um, but, you know, so a lot of ways that makes sense. You know, if you're going to get through there, you can't be stopping every three feet to catalog things, and you have to maintain order and discipline, or you're not going to make it through this territory, right? But none of them know down there what's going on. Except Ike. Ike lived down there. He, see, he hires on as a guide uh, for this, this expedition, right? He's, he's, you know, he's he's a man for hire, but he's not really going down there because he's interested in the money. He does not want these people to be killed or captured. That's the worst thing that can happen to him, the by the Hadels. So, like, in a way, it increases their chances of survival if he goes with them. But really, the main reason he goes down is because he's a man lost, and he lost himself to the deep, right? He, even though he was a slave underground, he grew to basically love it down there, and like all the inner workings have been called out to his adventurous spirit. He was a mountain, uh, mountain climbing guide and all that, and outdoorsman and all that, always like to be away from people. So it's just something down there called to him, and it continues to call to him. So yeah, he's the, he's the expedition leader and expert down there, what's going on, how to move around down there in the dark, and, and basically, you know, what to watch out for, because this entire exposition says that the Hadels are gone, right? The, the bad guys are gone, they've been wiped out. They expect no resistance down there. And if there was resistance, they have, you know, lots of fully armed and capable soldiers down there, right? No, Ben! No! Uh, at least that's what they're led to believe, so... I won't tell you any more, um, because 
there's a lot going on here that you just need to read for yourself. But it's such a gross or such an engrossing story that I definitely think it um, it bears mentioning and bears definitely reading. If you've never read it before, this has different elements of horror, action, you know, drama. I mean, it runs once again the gamut of of different literary genres here. There's even romance in here if you really get down to it, and it's all done very well. But it's done in a fast, brisk, brisk pace, and there's a lot of interplay between what's going on in the surface and what's going down, down beneath. But it's just such an inventive book, and you just can't put it down, man. You've got to read more. You got to find out what new horror is waiting around the corner, or who's going to break down next, or you know how are these people going to find their food. It's just it's so inventive and creative, and I just I just love uh, Jeff Long's prose in this. It all sounds really natural. Like those di most of the dialogue sounds realistic, and you know most people's motivations seem kind of realistic too. You know, once again, not everyone behaves well under stress and pressure, even when there's no discernible enemy around you. So, who knows what the dark and the deep and the isolation can do to a person? So uncivilized. So. Yeah, just, just an amazing book, and it actually spawned a sequel called Deeper, which is also good. I, I do prefer the first book a little more, just because it has more of a, um, it's more of a mystery, you know, of what's going on. Everything's newly discovered, and when you've read the second book now, you kind of know a little bit of what to expect. You know, a lot of it gets turned on its head, but this book even deals with, like, metaphysics and, like, spirit transfer, or consciousness transference in it. So there's, there's so much going on here, and, um... I just can't recommend it enough. Uh, and it, like I said, don't get me wrong, D uh, Deeper is also a great read, too. Um, and you guys should learn a little bit more of why things are the way they are down there and up top. So it's fascinating just as well, just in a different way. But this is more of the human tale, and I don't know how to explain it, but just it's such a good read. I love it. And the movie didn't have anything really to do with the book other than being underground. I remember, I'd never seen the whole thing through, but I remember seeing snippets of it, and it was, uh, they turned it into a monster flick, monster horror flick, and that really wasn't, isn't what this book is about. Yes, the things that go up at night are petrifying and scary, and they can hurt and kill you, but, you know, this book is just as much about exploration as it is about death and destruction. So, highly recommended book. Once again, it's called The Descent by Jeff Long uh, for 1999. Give it a read, uh, and let me know what you think below. If you have read this book before and agree with my assessment or disagree with it, I'd like to know that. Or if you actually pick up this book and read it after watching this little review here, uh, I'd like to hear about that too. And let me know what you thought about it, because uh, I, I just love to give <laughs> people a heads up on good literature, right? So uh, the last time it was Hyperion, and now this time it is The Descent by Jeff Long. So, and the follow-up deeper, of course. So... Anyway, thanks for watching. Oh, and by the way, Blinky back there says hello. He's just frolicking about, probably waiting for me to feed him again. But I just found him earlier, too. No, Blinky, you're not getting any more. Anyway, where was I? Oh, yeah, that's right. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, stay tuned for more review content coming up in the near future, because you know, if I can review it, I will do it. Uh, more book reviews, movie reviews, uh, TV episode reviews, comic book reviews, you name it, I'll be reviewing things and maybe even some more how-tos, who knows. But anyway, hopefully the new shotgun mic is working well for this format and uh, we can get you a nice, high-quality review coming up not too far down the pipe. So, until next time, this is Genome. Really hoping the Hadels don't exist so he can go spelunking and feel safe. <laughs>